I'm Max Sterling. Welcome to LARPgasm. So, I decided it's time to get a new seat in my dungeon. I thought, why not a throne? So, I just happened to be out last night and found a very interesting looking chair laying on the side of the road. I couldn't help but notice that it has a throne-like appearance. So, for your viewing pleasure, how to convert an antique chair into a throne. So this is the chair. You can see that it has a pretty high back and a good stance. Um, obviously, the pull string job is completely shot. And that's okay because we're going to completely change that anyhow. So I went ahead and removed the upholstery from this chair. If you look at the backs of these old chairs, usually there's just maybe like four screws on the back, four screws on the bottom that hold these things in. Uh, if it's very old, then you're not going to have screws. It's probably going to be wood. But you can see here, there's a few screw holes. And that's all that was holding this together. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to need to put some putty or some little wood pegs in there when I'm done to cover up those screws, but the chair itself is in pretty good condition. Uh, it's nice and solid and heavy. The only things that I'm seeing problems with is this leg in the back is split right here, which we're gonna fix, and this leg is missing some wood. So this chair is not that old, I can tell by this crappy wood veneer. We're gonna go ahead and fix that. We're also gonna fix these structural issues, but reupholstering is very easy. So I'm hoping that if one of you wanna do a project like this, you can, very simply. So the simpler part of this project is removing this old crummy upholstery. Now on here you can see that there are some staples holding this on, and that's gonna be it. So you just need to pull this off of here, pull the staples out, and you'll be all set. Same goes for the back. If your actual seat board is cracked or broken, you may need to cut a new piece for this, but I think this one will be fine. Also, if the foam inside is all jacked up, which this is, you're gonna need to get some new foam. Now I used to do furniture restoration, so I have the tools I need for this. If you don't have one of these, they sell them pretty much anywhere, Lowe's, Home Depot, probably at Walmart even. But all you're gonna do is take, get under the staple, and just lift and rip it out. Rinse, repeat. So once you get going on this, it's actually pretty easy. <clears throat> if you have staples that don't want to come out, just use some pliers on them to pull them. But just go around and that's pretty much it. This, whoever upholstered this was insane. They put way too many staples in it, which leads me to believe that this was probably reupholstered at some point in time. Okay, so I've removed all the staples from the seat portion and now I'm working on the actual back of the seat. Um, now there were some staples in here which you just use your tool and lift out. You can use a screwdriver if you don't want these, but this is going to make it a heck of a lot easier on you. The back of it actually has a tack strip in it. So this is a piece of cardboard with nails lined on it. And this will make it real easy when we're taking it off because all you have to do is basically just either pull on it or just use this for leverage as opposed to pulling out individual staples, which gets to be very tedious. Um, as far as uh, this goes, I just have to finish taking this off, and you can see that there is a thin layer of, well, once upon a time it was something, but we're going to put some foam back here, and that will give a little bit of puffiness to the back. And then on the front, of course, there's foam, and the foam's all totally degraded. The seat foam was actually just like uh, powder, so it's real bad. Now, once you pull this off of here, you can lay this out flat and you can use it as a pattern for your other fabric that you're going to put on so that way you don't have to do any measuring or anything you're just going to use this fabric now if you didn't want to pull this off of here so if you the chair you got everything already looked pretty good you could actually just put the fabric right over top of it uh, it'd be a heck of a lot easier and faster but this is all gnarly and it's actually still damp it must have been outside for a while so it's completely crusty and I just want to make sure that there's no bed bugs or anything. Plus, you know, this thing's probably like 90 years old. I don't want anyone's like old ass butt cheese from the seat and stuff on here. So that's why I'm going to change out the fabric and foam. Okay, so we have the back all opened up. It actually kind of looks like a tombstone, which is fun. Um, all these random strings coming through these holes in the back, those are actually for the buttons that come through on the front of the chair. So 
If you ever wondered how those are done, this is the magic. So I stained the frame of the chair uh, rather than painting it. I don't have anything darker right at the moment, but I wanted to just put a layer of stain on there to sort of see what I was working with and see how it would come back. Surprisingly, the wood took it very well. And uh, the frame itself is actually looking pretty good. I'm going to go darker with it, however. But for now, this will do. The next step is going to be fixing this crack and that chunk that's missing off the back over there. I'm going to go get a piece of wood, set it behind it, draw a line, and then compare it to this using this as my template since it has a sweep on it. And then I'm just going to go in the bandsaw and cut it. That is a very clean break on that. I'll sand it a little bit and use some wood glue to put it together. So this is the little piece I cut out. Now it doesn't look like much now, but once it's stained and attached, it should be basically almost indistinguishable from this side. So how I did that was I just used this leg as a template, put the wood behind it, used a pencil to draw some lines, did the same on here, went in my bandsaw and cut this out. Now of course it needs sanded and prepped, but I just wanted to show you this so you get the idea of where we're coming from. So yesterday off camera I did a little bit of work on this chair. So I got my replacement piece for the back of that leg and I glued this back together. So all I did for this was just cut a piece out using the other side as a pattern, make sure that it lined up real nice. Let's go take a little bit of sanding, uh, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, as far as this side, this hairline crack that was in it, I just took a piece of dental floss, put some wood glue here, and just worked it all down in several times, and then clamped it shut. So, theoretically, this side should be glued together and basically good to go if you didn't want to do anything else. And this side should also be. Now, I'm going to go one step further and actually do a repair on it. Now since it's wood, we're going to do, you know, our old school, you know, old world style repair where you drill a hole and then we're going to hammer a dowel in with glue. And we're going to do the same thing here. One probably would have sufficed, but I wanted to do two just to make sure it's extra sturdy because I'm a pretty big guy. I don't want this breaking. Uh, but basically you just drill in on an angle, which is what I did. You take your drill bit, put a piece of tape on it so you don't drill too far, and then drill in on an angle. And this will slide right up inside. And then we'll use a saw to cut it flush. And when it's all done, you won't need any wood putty or anything because this is already wood. You just stain right over it. Let me go ahead and get to work on that right now. So the next step is going to be to insert the dowel rod into these holes. Now we're going to put some glue on this dowel rod uh, to act as a lubricant. But then also, obviously, once it's in there, to keep it stuck in place. We're going to want to make sure that we get a fair amount in there. Now I should have a rubber mallet, but I'm just going to use this one instead. Alright, now once it won't go any further, that's it. Okay, so that's in there. We're going to wipe off around this and then saw that off. Now if you have a wood shop and the small specialty saw that you need, good for you. If you don't, just use a hacksaw. Just be careful not to nick up the top of the chair or put any marks in it. Do not saw towards your hand. <laughs> Okay, and that's it. Now we're just gonna to need to sand that down a little bit and we'll be good to go. 
we're going to move on to the other two holes. And there's what the other side looks like with the dowels in it. And then I'm just going to saw those off. You may need to use a wood file uh, above sandpaper first. Just to make sure everything is nice and even. If you need to do that, that's fine. And then just come in with your sandpaper. You have a nicely repaired chair. Now all you got to do is stain it, which is what we're going to do. So the next step, I'm going to go ahead and stain this. I'm using a very dark mahogany. I could do black, but if I was going to do black, why wouldn't I just spray paint it and save myself a lot of money and time? So instead I'm going to use this. It's a stain and polyurethane in one step. That way I don't have to stain it and then come back and seal it so I can do it in all one shot. Now. After you do this, you're supposed to sand it down or run steel wool on it to get all the bubbles out. I'm just going to be very careful and take my time, and hopefully it comes out okay. But let me go ahead and get started on this. Before you start staining, make sure you wipe your project down so that there's no sawdust or any dust on it or else it's going to get stuck underneath. Looking better already. So this is the color of the chair. It's really dark mahogany. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. Please click on part two to continue your journey and see the exciting climax to this film. Don't leave me hanging. Good morrow, lords and ladies. Are you finding this topic particularly difficult to masturbate to? I understand completely. But allow me to entice you with some of the other video offerings that I have. They are sure to provide the correct incentive and vivid imagery that you require to complete your second favorite hobby after LARPing. Please subscribe using the link below and allow me to take you on a voyage of intense pleasure through LARPgasm, the finest, most debaucherous LARPing channel on YouTube. Subscribe now.